I'm going to do an example using the general population model. This example. And I'll read it and then say a word or two about it and then do it. Suppose that the fish population, P of T in a lake, is attacked by a disease at time T equals zero, with the result that fish cease to reproduce and the death rate is proportional to one over the square root of the population thereafter. If there were initially 900 fish in the lake, and after six weeks only 441 are left, when will the population go extinct? Now, this example certainly has very little to do with real life ecology and real life disease dynamics. I mean, first of all, what is this lake where we can perfectly count to the number of fish? What is this disease that results in a death rate exactly proportional to one over the square root of P? I mean, this isn't a real example, clearly. It's something taken from the textbook. But as an application of the general population model and as an application of separation of variables, let's run through it. Here is the general population model. Remember in this context, beta and delta are functions functions, even though they look like constants. I mean, we're not using function notation. We are told that after this disease strikes, this birth rate beta falls to zero. The fish stop to reproduce. And the death rate delta, we're told, is proportional to something. And what that means is that it's a constant k times that something. And this constant k is positive. When you see the phrase something is proportional to something else, this constant of proportionality is going to be positive. So our differential equation becomes this, and p divided by the square root of p is the square root of p. And I already mentioned using separation of variables here. Take the square root of P over to the left. Multiply both sides by a D a T. And then integrate. 
This is P to the negative one half. So when we integrate it, it becomes P to the positive one half, but we also divide by one half. So to the square root of P equals negative K T plus C. And now solving this is hopefully relatively straightforward. The population is this rational expression squared. And we're trying to find when extinction occurs. So we're trying to set population equal to zero. And for that, we need to know K, we need to know C. We're given two initial conditions. To clarify this a little, this is a first order differential equation. We only need one initial condition for a unique solution, but the unique solution will involve this model parameter K. We need a second initial condition if we want to know the model parameter, which we do want to know if we're going to set this equal to zero and get a numerical answer back. P of zero equals 900. Well, you let T be zero, P be 900. This actually has two solutions. We could take the positive square root or the negative square root, but C has to be positive. How do I know C has to be positive? Because of this equation. At time zero, well, the population is positive. So the square root of the population is positive. So two times that square root has to be positive. So at time zero, the left-hand side of this equality is positive and the right-hand side equals a C. Ergo, C is a positive constant. And going back to what I said in the intro about this problem not being very realistic, if you're doing differential equations and you get such a nice looking constant or parameter, um, then the differential equation you're solving came from a textbook. The real world is a lot more messy than that. But never mind. If we want to so set this equal to zero and get a numerical answer, we need to solve for k. p of 6 equals 441. 
So we'll plug six in four T and four hundred forty one in four P. Uh, copying error. This is being squared. Once again, this has two solutions. We can take a positive or negative square root. We'll find both the square roots and then figure out which value of k is correct. A little down the road. So the square root of 441 is 21. Multiply both sides of this equality by two. To um, subtract 60 from both sides. And finally, we solve for k. And going back to a comment I made earlier, that constants of proportionality. Uh, sorry, I was about to. Uh, happily tell you that because k has to be positive, um, there's only, we, we know whether we have a plus or minus sign here. That is not correct. Um, either positive or negative here gives us a positive k. So we're going to have to do a little more work after all. Here are our candidates. And we are asked when the population will go extinct. So let's take this putative population formula. and set it equal to zero. We get sorry, we shouldn't change our variable name mid video. We get t equals negative 60 divided by negative 17, which is about 3.529 weeks. And um, that can't be right because we're given information about the population after six weeks. We're told that after six weeks, the population is 441 fish. 
So here's our putative population function. But of course, this graph has to be taken with a certain amount of common sense. I mean, the population can't be, probably isn't correct over here, for example. The fact that the fish are now dying doesn't mean that previously they were increasing quadratically. So the only part of this graph that actually makes sense is the part from here when the disease struck to here when the fish went extinct. The population does not then bounce back and start growing again. An extinct population remains extinct, meaning that the point around here, six comma four hundred forty one. has no meaning. So this isn't right. Our other population model, on the other hand, makes sense of this data. The population decreases after six weeks it's decreased to 441, and then it keeps decreasing until extinction. So only one solution makes sense of the data here, and we set this population equal to zero, which since this is a fraction amounts to just setting the numerator equal to zero. And we get extinction after 20 weeks. And, and our example is done. It uh, ended up being unexpectedly a little harder than I thought it would with us having to look at two competing solutions and decide which one made sense.